Uh. Oh, hey. Welcome to the Epic Flight Academy. This is the Private Pilot Ground School course, and my name is Mike Thompson. We are so glad you're here. Now, remember, as you go through this course, it's essential that you do it in three parts. The first part is the online course on Schoology, and these videos are the second part that parallel that online course. And thirdly, and just as important, be sure to review this content with your flight instructor. So just a moment ago, I was climbing this ladder. What's that all about? Our topic today is rate of climb. Now, when we say the word rate, we're dealing with time. Anything that says has the word rate in it, for example, the rate of climb means climb per given period of time. Today we're talking about the maximum rate of climb chart in terms of performance from your POH. Rate of climb and maximum rate of climb. Maximum rate of climb is defined as the most excess power available to the aircraft at any given altitude. And the V speed that defines that is VY. Now here you see a picture of that maximum rate of climb chart from your POH. I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, this is at 2,550 pounds. This is the maximum gross weight for the airplane. Secondly, and you recall this from other videos talking about performance, always, always, always review both the notes, you see those along the bottom, and conditions, you see those at the top. So let's talk about how to use <clears throat> this maximum rate of climb chart. Now, as you're aware already, performance is based on density altitude. When we enter this chart, we're gonna come down the left-hand column and enter at pressure altitude. Remember the definition of density altitude is a pressure altitude corrected for you got it, temperature. So we're then going to move horizontally to the appropriate temperature. You also recall from previous videos, <clears throat> if I have an in-between number, like my pressure altitude was 3,000 feet, but I have 2,000 and 4,000 shown, or my temperature was um, maybe 15 degrees Celsius and I have 0 and 20 shown. I've got to do one of two things. Number one, I can interpolate, work with your instructor on that. Number two, I can go to the next higher value. All right, so let's take a look at this chart. Let's say that I am at a pressure altitude of sea level and the current temperature is 20 degrees Celsius. So I come to the pressure altitude column, I see SL for sea level, and I move horizontally. And I see as I move horizontally, my climb speed in knots indicated airspeed, that's K-I-A-S, will be 74. As I move across to the 20 degrees Celsius column, I see I should expect a rate of climb in feet per minute of something pretty close to about 710 feet per minute. So this is an important chart. Remember, review the notes and conditions. Also, don't be surprised if you don't climb at exactly 710 feet. It might be a little more or a little less. These performance charts are to give pilots a close expectation of performance. Not, it's not going to be the exact performance you're going to, uh, you're going to see. So that's how we read this maximum rate of climb chart. Now, notice one final thing before we continue. 
as the pressure altitude goes up, the VY climb speed goes down. The reason for this will go into more detail in later videos, but what it means is at higher altitudes there is less excess power available. Okay, you might want to review that a little bit more with your flight instructor. Just note for the moment that as my altitude goes up, my VY airspeed goes down. When I'm climbing out on a cross country, for example, and I want to climb up several thousand feet, I may not hold my VY airspeed for that entire climb. It's very likely that I might decide to do what's called a cruise climb. Now, in the cruise climb, I won't climb at quite as much feet per minute, but I do have other advantages. I'll have better engine cooling, I'll have better visibility over the nose, I can make a few S turns as I climb so I can get uh, a good idea of, um, of uh, other traffic and things around me. So there's a lot of advantages to a cruise climb even though my feet per minute may actually go down a little bit. So how do we adjust our performance calculations if we're climbing at a cruise climb? Well, I'm going to give you a ballpark number, and it's this. We're going to reduce that climb rate by 20%. Reduce that climb rate by 20%. Now, how did we come up with that figure? Let's take a look. The way we came up with that figure was through the use of this chart. Now I want you to notice on the left hand side we have ROC or rate of climb. So as we go up the rate of climb is higher and across the bottom we have airspeed. As we move to the right the airspeed gets faster. Now I've identified three specific airspeeds on this chart, two of which I think you already know. The first one is VSO, that's stalling speed in a landing configuration. That's down here at the low end of this airspeed line. The second one is VY, this one we already know. That's my maximum rate of climb and that's up here at the top of the arc where I have maximum rate of climb. And the third one you may or may not be familiar with. The third one is defined as VH. Now VH means my maximum cruising speed with maximum continuous power. If you're not familiar with that speed, you can look it up in FAR 1.2 and you can see this speed of 126 knots indicated in the performance specifications pages in your Cessna's POH. Review that with your flight instructor. So, how do we read this graph? Well, notice at VSO, what do you think your climb rate would be. Now if you think about it, VSO, I'm flying pretty slow, I've got landing configuration, I've got power in, if I increase the angle of attack only slightly or reduce the power or increase the load factor, I'm going to stall. Rate of climb here, if you said zero, you are correct. So my VSO speed here is showing a zero rate of climb. Now back to that VH, maximum continuous power, maximum speed in cruise. I'm using up all of my excess available power just to get to my VH speed. What do you think my rate of climb is going to be? And if you said zero, you're correct. Now somewhere between my VSO of 40 knots and my VH of 126 
is a speed of 74 knots at sea level. That'll be my maximum rate of climb. So let's go straight up and sure enough, at the peak of this arc, you see, I cannot get a higher rate of climb. That is by definition, my maximum rate of climb, that's VH. Now here's the interesting part about this chart. I'm gonna follow this blue arc to the left and I'm coming down the blue arc as my airspeed is decreasing my rate of climb is going down now let's do the same thing and follow the blue arc to the right as my airspeed is increasing my rate of climb is going down. Now think about that for a second. By definition, any speed other than Vy, which is the maximum rate of climb speed, any other speed will be something less than maximum rate. Okay, so if I go to, let's say for example, 85 knots. That is Cessna's recommended cruise climb speed. Now, if I come across the bottom of the airspeed chart and I just take a guess about where 85 would be and I come straight up, I can see that intersects this blue arc at point number two. Can everybody see that? So VY is 74, point number two is my cruise climb speed. Now all we've done is taken a horizontal dash line between points one and two and come over to the left side of the chart and said, well, as we know, by definition, my rate of climb has come down. How much? Approximately 20%. And that's where our 20% reduction in the rate of climb comes from, if we're at speeds above or below VY. Well, folks, I hope that made sense. That is performance rate of climb at the Epic Flight Academy. We'll see you next time.